Man, glory to Jesus Christ for his grace and mercy and love and favor. In spite of my failures and perfections, may the Lord Jesus flood us in his infinite love, wash us in the blood of the Lamb. The Lord Jesus Christ, his holy blood, fill us with the Spirit in Jesus' name for his grace, mercy, compassion, and love that we don't deserve. I pray in Christ Jesus' name. I keep losing weight until I finally <clears throat> lose everything I need to, that he gives me the health I need to glorify him, but most importantly, the holiness to delight his heart and to make him happy and, and to just <clears throat> magnify the name of Jesus Christ. May increase in us. May we decrease. We love you. We love you, Father. We love you, Lord Jesus. We love you, Holy Spirit, in Jesus' name. What's up, guys? Good to see you. I want it to be on Tuesday, so just to give you a few updates. Hopefully, the regulars will show up and new faces. Remember, my goal is to have more people watching my live stream than David Wood, right? Hater Wood, who puts people asleep. So let's let's push for that. Thank you, Nate. God bless you. You you are a gift of God as well. All of us, we are the Father's love gift to the Son of the Lord Jesus Christ. Good to see you. Chris Smith, Isaiah 44, 6, and Revelation 1, 17, 18. That's a little more difficult. What do you want to, what are you trying to convince the Mormons of? Because, you know, they don't believe that Elohim, God the Father, has eternally been God. They believe Elohim, God the Father, was a man, sired by gods before him. And that Elohim has a physical body, a fleshly body, and that he has sex with these celestial wives and that Jesus is Jehovah, one of the offspring of Elohim. So what do you what do you want to prove, right, with the use of Isaiah 44, 6 and Revelation 1, 17, 18? Because they do believe Jesus is Jehovah, right? They believe Jesus is Jehovah. The Father is Elohim and Jesus is Jehovah. So what exactly do you want to prove, Chris Smith? Guys, let's wait a few more minutes. Hopefully we get the regulars in. And hopefully God will transform us to become more like Jesus by the power of the Holy Spirit, more patient, more loving, and save me from my imperfections. And Holy Spirit, crucify my flesh and destroy my flesh and purify us in the holy blood of Jesus Christ. I know I got some weird head movements. I don't know why, but I do. Okay, Johnson, God bless you. God bless every one of you and watch over you for the glory of Jesus Christ. Kay Johnson, that's that's the thing. You asked me another good question. Revelation 21, 6 to 7. If you just read it, the natural reading is that it's God the Father because he says, I will be his God and he'll be my son. However, I, I've argued in the past, and some can ar will argue, that there it does not say, I will be his father and he'll be my son. I will be his God and he'll be my son. So that it can be a reference to Jesus Christ without this implying that Jesus is God the Father. I'd have to unpack that. Let's see, because I have a topic. We'll see if I can tie it in, Kay Johnson. All right? Christ the way, 24. Good to see you. I hope you're staying strong. It's been, I saw you a couple weeks ago, but prior to you coming on my YouTube ch channel, I hadn't seen you in years. We used to join together on Pal Talk. <clears throat> Is your, yeah, I know, I know. The last time we talked, yeah, I don't know, but yeah, they don't know who you are. But they were saying you had left Islam. And then uh, when I disappeared, they're saying that you're considering Islam, but glory to Jesus Christ, you're strong in Jesus Christ, in love with Jesus Christ, in love with the triune God. Same thing with your sister, right? She left Islam too, right? May the Father, the Son, Holy Spirit beatify me for the glory of Jesus, beatify us and make us holy and pure for the glory of Jesus. Yeah. Remember you told me a story a while back on Peltoc about some Muslims admitting something about being afraid or that uh, was it about Sharia Ali losing the debate? Who's a beautiful Christian young girl? Remember? Some Muslims. Yeah, I forgot the story. And I'm not mentioning it because I want to toot my own horn. May God crucify my flesh, destroy my pride. Oh, okay. I'm sorry, sister. And I didn't know. I don't know who you're talking to. Sorry about that. Hapsa... Left Islam for the glory of Jesus and made the Holy Spirit sealer for the glory of Jesus. When you say young, 
anyone under 47 is young to me because I'm 47. I'm an old man. So when you say young, I don't know how old is young. Anyone under 47 is young. I'm an old man. You know, it's ironic. I don't feel old. Meaning I, I, I sense like I'm still like a child and joyful, even though my body reminds me, hey, don't deceive yourself. Thank you, Anna. If you keep telling me I'm gorgeous, I'm going to melt. Okay. Before I begin, I just want to give some updates, some prayer requests, and then trust the Holy Spirit to guide the conversation for the glory of Jesus Christ. Pray the Holy Spirit will continually refresh me, rejuvenate me, purify me, and save me from my flesh, the struggles of my flesh, not to succumb to my flesh, but to overcome my flesh and crucify my flesh and its carnal lusts to be pure and holy for the glory of Jesus Christ, because I can tell you it is a struggle. So I, said, I can't, I don't want to smile because you know why I, I just drank coffee. And every time I drink coffee, every time I drink coffee, I get coffee tan stained teeth. So I wouldn't do any Colgate commercials. Yeah. Hit the like button, please. Man, you are an old person. Cocoa puffs. You make me feel young. Chris Smith is saying, isn't Isaiah 44, 6 talking about the father for his last? If it's talking about the father, then why would you then apply to Revelation 1, 17, 18, Chris Smith? Are you trying to prove that Jesus is the father? So that's why I don't understand what you're trying to prove. Because if it's the father, then in Revelation 1, 17, 18, Jesus says he's the first and last. Are you saying that Jesus is the father? So you have to be more specific in what you're trying to prove. All right, kiss a little longer, romance a little longer, da, 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 da. A longer with Big Red. <laughs> All right, Michael D. Good to see you, bro. I hear you. I see you're taking jujitsu, bro. What you trying to do? Get bad? Used to be a pro wrestler. Now you want to be a jujitsu black belt? Gracie jujitsu? No, let me start taking contemporary Jeet Kune Do. Because if I take contemporary Jeet Kune Do, I'm going to wipe your school out. Because contemporary Jeet Kune Do is Paul, Paul Vunak's uh, expression of Jeet Kune Do. Paul Vunak was one of the few first people to bring in Gracie Jiu-Jitsu and to promote Gracie Jiu-Jitsu. And he's a student of Danny Nasanto. Danny Nasanto is a student of Bruce Lee. And Paul Vunak is one of the baddest dudes on the planet. He knows about realistic fighting. He knows about dirty fighting. And he knows how to teach you to survive in an actual street fight where there are no rules, even with weapons. Joan Arc, that's why you got to be on my social media. I have been posting pictures of my angels because they've been talking to me regularly. But the more they talk to me, Oh, thank you, Rebel. God bless you. Rebel Mark, thank you for that. Just to let you know, my daughters have been talking to me now regularly, but the more they talk to me, the more they miss me, and the more they tell me to come back. And the more they tell me to come back, the more their mother is hearing, and the more it's a knife in her heart by the power of the Holy Spirit. So, guys, covenant with me and pray. Jesus Christ brings them to me and removes this man, Martin Simon Yako. Yes, I will mention him by name, so you can mention him by name before the throne of Jesus. He must go. He has no right in their life. I'm their father, and they're aching for me in Jesus' name. Okay? So, folks, just to let you know, I told you to pray for me February 19, right? And I thought it was going to be very bad because there's another date, February 27, next Thursday. But today I got what seems to be good news, and it's like too good to be true, but Jesus Christ is infinitely good, and he is true. So I'm trusting that what I was told today, you know, because he said, yeah, I mean, I, I'm, I don't know how to say it. I don't know how to say it without giving away too much information. The good news I received today is amazing because this means by the power of Jesus Christ, I can never return to my state that I left, which I don't have any intention returning. And God will keep me safe from that wicked, evil agent of the devil so that she can't do anything to me. But I can travel anywhere and everywhere else, and I'm free to serve Jesus Christ. So yesterday, I was really bummed out what I heard. And I got really weak 
really sad. And today I received news that shocked me and blessed me. Yep, Michael Deke. Come on, brother. You, I thought you'd been following me. If I want, if I give away a lot of details, then the wrong persons who are listening will try to use this against me. Right? So it's good news today. Even the person who gave me the good news is kind of shocked. He goes, man, you understand you can't come. I said, Any, uh, he goes, you understand you can't come back, right? I go, yeah, glory to God. I don't want to come back me and harm me, preventing me from serving Jesus Christ. He goes, what about your children? I go, Jesus will bring them. Jesus will bring them. That's why I'm not worried. And he's already working, right? He will bring them. And I kept affirming them and I kept telling them. I said, after Jesus, you are my love and my heart. You are my home. I didn't leave you. I'll never leave you. I'm here preparing a place because I know. And I go, I kept telling him, I go, you know, Jesus loves you. And my daughter said, we know that. You know, Jesus hears you, right? He goes, yes. The more you pray to Jesus, then you will be with me sooner than later. Or we're going to start our lives again because I'll never leave you. And then my sweet, my sweet firstborn, you know what she said? See your family. So I share with you. I know they're going to be. Mohammedans and anti-Trinitarians who hate me are going to use this against me. That's fine. She told me, Baba, why don't you find someone to love you, a woman to love you? She goes, like mommy found someone. I said, well, I laughed. I go, no, no, no. Your mom didn't find anyone. But I go, don't worry about it. We're not going to talk about it now. I go, just in time. But you know what I told them? Right? You know what I said? I go, I already found two women who love me. I go, I found two women who love me. They go. All righty. Sorry about that, guys. It started buffering. I don't know if you heard me. It started buffering when I said, I said, I have two women who love me. I go, you and your sister Zippy. And she lit up and they started laughing. I go, why would I want anyone else? I have you girls. Right? Why would I need a woman to love me? I have you two. And they just lit up. You can see my, my firstborn, when she has, she lit up. And my baby girl was like laughing. Because that's true. As long as they're in my life, I was thoroughly, fully content. So thank you for allowing me to be a little more open about my personal life, because I know you love Jesus, and through your prayers, God will save me and my children for his glory. Okay, now, so pray for confirmation that next week I will get confirmation, because I already got confirmation now, and he's going to say, mighty name, Yahweh, yeah, Father, Son, Spirit. Okay, sorry about that. I'm at, as you can see, I'm at Child of God's home. I still haven't got internet connection in my apartment. All I can tell you, God bless me with a beautiful apartment. Hopefully I'll have internet, if not tomorrow, by Saturday in Jesus' name. So I don't know why it's buffering, but the internet here is much better than my brother's place. Now, with that said, uh, I was saying something. I lost my train because I started buffering. What was I saying to you guys? Can you guys remind me? What was I? I, I lost, man, I, I don't know. I was saying something, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. I got confirmation today. He's going to send it via email. But still, it's like I'm in shock. Like, it's too good to be true because that's what I wanted, you know? And it is true because Jesus is infinitely good. So that by next week, February 27, I believe the date, it will be settled. And I'm a, a free person to serve Jesus freely and not to worry. <clears throat> I can go anywhere to glorify Jesus Christ and... This is, again, confirmation that the Lord wanted me to leave my state. I had a burden to leave, and God released me, and this confirms I'm not to go back until Herod dies. And, again, don't get me wrong. Don't misunderstand me. Misunderstand me. I am not comparing myself to Jesus. I'm not worthy of Jesus' sandals, his shoes. I'm not worthy of the dust that he walked on. In fact, the donkey that he rode on is better than me, and I mean that in Jesus' name. But you understand what I mean. A wicked, evil oppressor misusing the legal system to destroy people's lives. May the Lord Jesus do to her what he did to Herod and Pharaoh. Right? Because I'm not the only one that this person has tried to destroy. I'm not the only one. So as long as she breathes, I need to stay away from that place. Right? So until God removes that Herod. That Pharaoh who oppresses people unjustly because she thinks she's a God on that throne. But may the true God strike fear in her and show her she must bow before the feet of G King Jesus. I will be 
forced to stay away from that place. Right? Joanna, sister, Lord Jesus bless you and preserve and watch over you. I got it the first time, sister. I know you think that you need to repeat it more than once for me to see it. I saw it the first time. Joanna. Do you remember that song? Does anyone remember? Man, I got, I don't know if my face is meant for comedy or for a horror film. Sometimes I look at myself and I want to laugh. Sometimes I look at myself and I put the fear of God in me, right? Because I just did Joe, and then I'm looking at, see, look at Simone and destroy the TV set. Okay, hold on. Joanna. Yes, yeah, so you guys knew Cool in the Gang, right? Joanna, I love you. You're the one, the one for me. Thank you. It was uh, which is better? Was it, it was Halal Hogan better or was the the Mad Sheikh better? Yeah, the picture is not too clear. Sorry, guys. Okay, now it's clear. Yeah, if it keeps buffering, I'm gonna bust this guy's windows. I'm gonna bust his computers. Right? I'm gonna smash his television set if it keeps buffering. So maybe that's why we need to wait a few more minutes. Everyone believed Jesus Christ was coming in their lifetime. Everyone believed that because he comes like a thief in the night, right? So you like that. How about this one? Cherish the night we had. Uh -huh. Cherish the night. Cherish the night. Cherish the night. Remember that song? Yeah, I don't know the words. One thing about me, there are a few, few songs that I know the words to. Right, few songs that I know the words to, so I gotta mumble my way through. It's like with with Elvis. Where you go, again? We have all river. It's not ever all we need. Hey, brother, man, you can sing a mean tune, brother. Yeah, baby. Hello, Hogan. Yeah. Right. I even got the curl going down. Get down on it. Yeah, not with uh, razzles. Razzle dazzle, baby. Not with with uh, music. Okay, book recommendation. Since we got into that controversial topic, the Fidioke Clause, Dear Brother in Jesus Christ, Alan Ruhl, who's got an excellent blog from a Catholic perspective, alanruhl.com, recommended this book, book. Recommended this book. It's called... The Filioque, History of a Doctrinal Controversy by A. Edward Ciense. Oh, man. What, this, what a name, dude. Okay. Let's see. It's C. Cienski. C. Cienski. Oxford Studies in Historical Theology. This is a book length treatment on the Filioque. Filioque is the word and the son. What did church history say about the Spirit's procession? Did he proceed from the Father alone or from the Father through the Son? So I got this book, and I went to his chapter on what does the New Testament say. Lord Jesus willing, slowly but surely, I'm going to simmer over this and see what he has to say and take it from there. Is that all the announcements? I think so. Yep, good guy, Wilkerson. Eat that up. It's one of the best introductions to the Trinity. The book, The Forgotten Trinity by Dr. James R. White, is an excellent book for those who are in the beginning or intermediate stages of the Christian faith. Meaning if you're a babe in the faith or you're intermediate stage working towards more advanced studies, excellent book. He defines the theological terms associated with the Trinity He's got a chapter on the nature of God, what the Bible says about what makes God God. And then he proceeds to demonstrate that the God-breathed scriptures, the inspired scriptures, the Holy Bible, ascribes to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit all of the essential characteristics, attributes that make God God. And then he shows that they're not the same person. Right? The Forgotten Trinity by Dr. James R. White. I have my copy in the car, the updated version. And I think I had, uh, Child of God has a copy that I showed to you, but this is the older version. Let me see. 
I have. Yeah, he has it somewhere here. Anyway, somewhere here, and I was, I did, I did show it to you. The Forgotten Trinity by Dr. James R. White. Watch one of my previous sessions. Yeah, the one I did on John. Now, with that said, let's ask the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ to bless us. Now, before I do that, Guy Wilkerson, let me again repeat a point that I repeatedly make, right? Repeatedly make. Do not throw the baby out with the bathwater. I know that's a cliche, but what that means is just because there's a person whom you may disagree with in a particular area, like you disagree with James White's Calvinism, doesn't mean that person doesn't have anything beneficial to say because no one person knows <clears throat> all the issues. No one you, person, when I say person, I'm talking about human creatures, obviously. The triune God, the persons of the Godhead are exempted, right? No one human person has perfect understanding of the Bible. And no one human person, right, is <clears throat> the be-all and end-all of biblical studies. So you can learn a lot from someone you may disagree with theologically because he may see things or she may see things that you don't see because you're biased by your tradition. This is why I study a variety of... Of voices. I watch a variety of voices. I watch, and someone attacked me for this, by the way. I got attacked. Catholic apologist, right? Anyway, I listen to Roman Catholic theologians, apologists, Orthodox <clears throat> theologians when I can, even their apologists when I find them. And I listen to a variety of Protestant perspectives because, as you well know, within Protestantism, you have Baptists, you have Presbyterians, you have <clears throat> Yeah, Lutherans and Episcopalians, also known as Anglicans. So I like to hear from a variety of voices because this person will have insights that this other person has and vice versa. And my trust is in the Holy Spirit to guide me into all truth and protect me from error and correct me from any mistakes and give me the grace and the power to then live the truth for the glory of Jesus. Right? So if you think, oh, Calvinist, that's it, false god, you know, a different god, or Arminian, ooh, almighty will of man, Trump's the son, then you're not, you're going to be very, very limited, and you're going to rob yourself of insights that these other traditions see that your particular tradition may not see due to their biases. And we all have biases, the work of the Holy Spirit is to set us free from any bias that's contrary to Scripture and give us the power to live the fullness of the truth of the revelation of Jesus Christ as an expression of our love for him, right? You with me there? What was I looking for, man? There was something I wanted to show you guys. So with that said, let's begin. Father, we love you. Lord Jesus, we love you. Holy Spirit, we love you, though we love you imperfectly. And Father, please, we need grace, we need mercy, we need compassion, we need your pity, Father. Never give me what I deserve, because Father, if you give me, any of us, what we deserve, then we would deserve destruction and judgment. And Father, give us the grace to also be patient with one another, to show compassion and mercy and pity towards one another, as we want you to bestow your mercy, your love, your compassion and pity upon us, Father. And Father, save me from my imperfections. Save me from my flesh. Save us from our carnal desires. Crucify our flesh and fill us with the Spirit to truly walk in union with your Spirit and to be like the Lord Jesus Christ and the way Jesus loved and the way Jesus worshipped and the way Jesus lived and the way Jesus acted. Because that's what the Bible says our goal is to become. By the power of the Holy Spirit, to conform to the image of your glorious blessed Son, the Lord Jesus Christ. Make us more like your son. May he increase in us. May we decrease. And Father, have your way with this session. Fill my lungs and my chest and throat with the breath of life, with health from your spirit. Anoint the sound of my voice to be pleasing to the ears of your servants, Abba. Please, Father, Avinu. Please, Lord Jesus, please, Holy Spirit, and save me from stammering and confusion and from error and to recall the scriptures perfectly. And save me from being unnecessarily offensive and save us from attacks of blasphemers who come here to try to cause us to stumble. Bind up all evil spirits. Cover us with the blood of Jesus. Seal us with your spirit. 
and cover our loved ones, my daughters, with the blood of Jesus and fill them, fill us with your spirit and save us, Father. Fight this wicked, evil, demonic agent in Illinois who's using the legal system to punish and destroy men unjustly. Silence her and chasten her to teach her the fear of your glorious presence, Father, of the presence of your Son, the Lord Jesus, and of your Holy Spirit. And Lord, provide through us for our loved ones. Provide through me for my daughters. And Lord, make me holy to delight your heart and enable me to continue to serve you until Jesus comes or until I die. We love you, Father. We love you, Lord Jesus, and we love you, Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name we pray. Don't ask me why I have these hand gestures like I do this with my head. I don't know. I don't know. Some people think that maybe – I've had people actually say that to me. Yeah, see, those are like demonic triggers. When he starts doing this, is because, you know, he's demonized in the hand sign, you know, right? One of the live streams I guess I was doing, I don't know what I was doing my hand. Ah, oh, look, look, man, you're doing, you're doing like these demonic signs. That's, that's a demonic twitch. You, you be twitching, bro. Yeah, I, I've had people tell me that. I think it was on a live stream with David Wood and Vocab Malone. Right? Yeah, I guess that's what it is because I got a big melon head like a crystal ball. I mean, yeah, I, I, yeah, I was on a live stream with David Wood, I think, and Vocab Malone. And someone's saying, Sam, look at your fingers, man. You're twitching like you're doing that El Coronado, baby. Yeah. Anyone know what that song is? What song did I just what song was I just singing? Huh? Then came you! And then came you! Highway to hell! What's in it? Uh huh, you wicked sinner. See, I was testing you. How do you know about that satanic group? You've been listening to too much worldly music, so I just exposed your hearts. Repent! Repent, you thinners! Repent! The only reason why I know about these songs is because I got to keep up to date with the latest music to see what the people are, <clears throat> are imbibing so I can then rebuke you. Uh-huh. And are growing. Did I just hear you correctly? An Orthodox sister who likes ACDC. Yeah, but isn't Gene Simmons' uh, kiss? You got the wrong group, Michala. Gene Simmons, isn't he kiss? Right? That's what I think it is. Kith, that's right. First last, by the way, pray for first last. Father, we come and we especially pray in Jesus' name, by the power of the Spirit, for first and last. Father, heal his back in Jesus' name. By the blood of Jesus, we are whole. By the wounds of Jesus Christ, we are whole. Because Jesus purchased not just the redemption of our souls, but the redemption of of our entire being, even the wellness of our bodies. And now we get a foretaste of what's to come, where our bodies will be made immortal and destructible. So, Father, in Jesus' name, speak life to his back and fill him with the Spirit so he can stand straight, strengthen, to serve Jesus Christ, your Son, in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Father, Son, and Spirit. I just forgot. I, we had to pray for him. This is the news I wanted to share. Yep, now I remembered. You guys remember my de debate with that oneness her heretic, that oneness pastor who worships a false god, Pastor Stephen Ritchie? The two debates I did in Florida, we had two debates you can you can find on various YouTube channels. You can find also on David Wood's channel, Acts 17 Apologetics. We did two debates on two nights in a oneness church. <clears throat> Old Testament on the Trinity and New Testament on the Trinity. And I praised the Triune God. I felt the Triune God gave me wisdom and knowledge to expose his blasphemous, heretical doctrine because the oneness God is a false God. You remember that? Okay. I like what he said. Yeshua said it was one-sided. Oh, yeah, and First Last has it on his YouTube channel. If I haven't mentioned it, Protestant Believer and First Last, they have YouTube channels. Subscribe to them. The reason why I mention him is because yesterday he died. He died last night of pancreatic cancer. He passed away last night. It, it turned out a few months ago, he was diagnosed with stage four pancreatic cancer. Stage four pancreatic 
pancreatic cancer. Holy Spirit, loosen my tongue. Save me from stammering and confusion. And last night, he passed away. So I found his telephone number on Facebook, and I spoke to his widow. I spoke to his widow, who obviously is devastated. So what I told her is, my prayer is, Jesus Christ will reveal himself to you and draw close to you. See, I haven't chosen my words correctly, because this is not the time to say, well, you worship a false god and you preach a false gospel. But I said to her, may Jesus Christ reveal himself to you which is a nice way of saying you don't know who Jesus is because you are preaching a false Jesus. May Jesus Christ reveal himself to you and draw close to you, right? So he passed away. Now he knows that the trying God lives and that he was preaching a false God. Now he knows that Jesus is the eternal son who has eternally existed with the Father even before creation came into being. So, and I'm not saying this gleefully, like, yeah, no, 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 but it is true. Once you die, then you discover who the true God is. And if you weren't worshiping the true God, who is the triune God, you're going to be in a shock, right? Because you're going to see it, the triune God lives. Now, with that said, I think we're ready to begin. Now, first, last, I don't know if you can post verses. If you can, let me know. If you can't, that's fine. I'll, I'll do it. Now, I got some new articles on my blog. Let me give you the links. Lord Jesus willing, later on, first and last, or someone else, Protestant believer, will post the links to the articles in the description box. Please, let me repeat, study these materials. Use them in your witness and evangelism, and you have my permission. I'm going to repeat it again. You have my permission. You can upload my articles and my videos. You can upload my videos to your YouTube channel and my articles to your websites. Just keep the name of the author and the name of the article or YouTube session intact. And don't sell them. Freely receive, freely shall give. And if you sell them, I want 99% of the proceeds. Okay? That's a fair deal. Here is an article I posted yesterday. Here is an article I posted yesterday. This article is about veneration of icons. Oop, I got your attention, especially if you're Orthodox or Roman Catholic. Veneration of icons, an unbiblical tr tradition or biblical truth? So read that article. Let me post the link again. An unbiblical tradition or biblical truth? You'll be surprised at what I have to say. And where, here's, again, further advice. Don't simply believe anything I say. Take the information I give you, go back and study them by opening up your own Bibles, look at the context, and pray to the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, save me from all errors, any mistakes that anyone makes, including Sam Shamoon, and I pray that for myself, and guide me into all truth and give me the grace to accept it. So pray that prayer anytime you read an article or a book by an uninspired human author or watch a video by an uninspired human author, because the only human authors that were inspired to give you God's perfect words are the authors of the books of the Holy Bible. That's our belief. Right? Now, let me give you another article that I posted yesterday. Here's another article that I posted yesterday. This is a supplement to a series of ref refutations and rebuttals to Shabir Ali's sham of a booklet, Shabir Ali wrote a booklet that he posted online, which we provided thorough refutations of his manhandling and shameless butchering of God's true word, the Holy Bible. The booklet is, is Jesus God? The Bible says no. And he has the audacity to say that none of the Bible writers taught that Jesus is God. So I posted a supplement to a previous response that I did, responding to Shabir Ali's discussion of Paul's Christology. So here's the link. Those of you witnessing to Muslims, here's the link. I'm going to post it twice. Do study these materials. I promise you, even if you don't witness to Muslims, the information you will receive will strengthen you in the core doctrines of the Christian faith. So even if you're not witnessing to Muslims, the articles will at least show you the biblical foundation for some of your beliefs, like the deity of Christ or the hypostatic union, that in the one eternal person, Named Jesus Christ, there are two natures. Jesus possesses two natures, a divine nature and a human nature, right? So study them 
nonetheless, even if you're not witnessing to Muslims. So save those links. And let me give you a few more and we begin. Part two of John 1. Pray the Holy Spirit will enable me to continue for, from where we left off and not forget any salient points because I want to address all the major issues with John chapter 1, verses 118, known as the prologue of John. Let me give you links to a few more articles. One second, folks. The ones I shared before, but I want to share it again. Just don't be haters. Don't hate. Participate. Oh, man. This was a long article. Very not. I like. Very not. And here's one that goes with the series I'm doing on refuting the Joe's Witnesses. If you go to my blog, in the search engine, you put Joe's Witnesses or you put New World Translation. And it will give you the links to a series of articles that I've written for the blog on how to refute Joe's Witnesses using their own Bible. Okay, And here's the latest one I did. More proof from the Jehovah Witnesses Bible that Jesus is Jehovah. Very nice. I like. Yeah, I like. Very nice. Here you go. All right. Are we ready now to go into John chapter 1? Trusting the Holy Spirit to take over and guide me to speak truth and save, save me from error. God is responding through you to me. Yeah, yeah. Wait. I, Freddie Coco, Shimon, and God is responding through you to me. Yaya? Who's Yaya? I have no idea. So God, again, is answering questions that you asked through me without me knowing. Is that what you're saying? Freddy Coco? All glory to the Chime God because the Chime God is real. He's almighty to save. And Jesus is alive. Okay, so if you got that, John 1. Let's look at John 1.1 1, 1 again. Oh, because he said Yaya. Because Yahya is the Quranic name for John the Baptist. No fascinating vision. In one of my previous sessions, I already addressed that Genesis 2 is the same creation account of Genesis 1, but with additional details. But that's not my topic right now. Even though Genesis 1 and Genesis 2, they are related to John 1, that's not my topic, right? Because I'm going to focus on Genesis 1 and Genesis 2 in relation to what John says about the role of Jesus in creating the heavens and the earth. But John 1, 1. First last, I don't know. You can't post, right? You, you're not able to post? That's fine. Because, guys, if he's not able to post, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to read the verses. I won't be able to post them in the text. So that's okay. Okay. Um, you can just go to BibleGateway.com. BibleGateway.com. Here it is. BibleGateway.com. Sure, Medic. Do you want to try? Okay, we'll give Medic a shot to, to, to post. Thank you, brother. God bless you. Go ahead. John 1-1. One, one. Okay, so hold on. Medic, do you want Black Smurf to do it or you want to do it? Let's just agree who's going to do it because we just need one. Just let's settle on that so we can begin. Come on, guys. we got to hit 200 today by the grace of Jesus. Okay, Black Smurf, if you want, John 1-1. One, one. John 1 1. Yep, hit that like button. Come on, guys. Don't hurt me. Spinelli, I know you like King James Version. Go ahead, Black Smurf. But even if they post a version other King James, don't worry. You just turn to your King James and look at it. Very nice. Let's see if Black Smurf is going to post in time. If not, I'm just going to do it because we don't want. Okay, thank you, brother. Thank you, Black Smurf. Thank you for serving us for the sake of Jesus. Uh, KJVS, you, you're scaring me, Black Smurf, because it reads like KJV, sin, the beginning. Sin, the beginning. What kind of King James Version are you reading, you sinner? Did you catch it? Do you, ca you guys see that? KGV, KJVS, because it's usually KJV, right? But here it's KGVS, and the S is conveniently placed before in. So you end up with sin, the beginning. Why you sinner, bro? Black Smurf, here you are in your subtle fashion trying to 
insert sin at the beginning. My goodness, Black Smurf. All right, one more time, brother. Just pull in your leg. One more time. Okay. Sin the beginning, huh? You want sin to be at the beginning? Yeah, I don't know what the S is. We know Black Smurf. Don't he's like paranoid. Now. Don't stone me, Sam. It wasn't me, man. We know, buddy. And we know it's not you. There's a demon attached to your computer. It's the demon's fault. See? The sin is crouching at your keyboard. Anyway, John 1 1. Guys, let's read. In the beginning was the word. Jibreel alayhi salam. And the word was with God, and the word was God. Trusting the Holy Spirit to take over. Here's where I need your undivided attention. So we can get the most of this. Most of this. Now, folks, don't be distracted. Focus, because we want to go into the meat. I want to continue from where we left off. Now, John is written in Greek. The word he uses for word is logos or logos. In the beginning was the logos. Logos. Now, this is a rich term that had meaning both for Greeks and Jews. I'm going to go very slow systematically and repeat myself more than once until by the grace of God's spirit, this information becomes second nature. Okay. Because I want you to learn this, absorb this, and then share it with other Christians and even unbelievers until they bow the knee to Jesus. Okay. John has written what's called Koine Greek, the common Greek spoken at that time. The word in Greek for word is logos or logos. Okay. This word, logos, 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 had meaning both for the Greeks and the Jews, right? For the Greeks, the logos was not just the spoken word, but the unspoken word in the mind, reason. So to a Greek, the word logos didn't simply refer to the word you uttered, but to the reason in your mind. In fact, even in English, that's where you get your word logic from. Logic comes from logos, logos. Are you with me there? You with me so far? I'm giving you how the Greeks understood this logos, okay? In Greek philosophy and in the theology of the Greeks, not the monotheistic Jews, they believed in this logos, this reason, this divine reason, <clears throat> That permeated the entire cosmos. They believed that Logos permeated all creation and gave it its order and meaning and form. In other words, to them, Logos was the divine reason that made everything cohere, that gave meaning and form <clears throat> and order to creation. It was a principle, a rational principle, right? The divine reason that governed all creation, that gave meaning to all creation, Gave form and order to all creation. That's how the Greeks understood Logos. You with me there? And many of the Greek fathers, because they were influenced by Greek philosophy. In fact, some church fathers. I don't know what's going on, man. Yeah, I, I hate when it buffers, man. It kills me. When it buffers, I want to just bang my head. Anyway. Some of the church fathers were converts from Greek philosophy and Greek paganism, right? Some of the church fathers, right, were converts from Greek philosophy and Greek paganism. Did you hear? Before I buffered, did you hear the part of what Logos meant to the Greeks? It was the divine reason, that rational principle that governed all creation, that gave meaning and order and form to creation.
Okay.